Hi, this is Kristen, and today I am here with the Dog and Bone Wetsuit Waterproof Slim Rugged Case. This case is waterproof and shockproof, both to 6.6 .6 feet. It is also snowproof, dirtproof, IP68 certified for maximum water and dust protection. It has a soft touch rubber case on the outside, and it can be used without any kind of a screen protector. Um, so in a way, it's kind of like the life-proof nude in that way, although you can use it with the included plastic screen protector that is in the box here. Um, and you can also buy a separate glass screen protector, which specifically fits this case, and I'll be reviewing that as well. It's called the Bone Guard. So basically, um, looking at the case here, um, I'm really impressed with the exterior appearance of it. Um, I like the pattern on the back. It really helps with grip. Um, the soft touch rubber grip, I would definitely agree with. This is a really nice feeling case in the hand. Going over here to the front, um, you can see that uh, there's a lot of protection here around the home button. And um, we see the, the filters here at the top, which are going to protect uh, your ear speaker and camera and stuff. Then we have the dire warning here. Stop, read all instructions carefully before putting this wet suitcase on your iPhone. And in fact, with this case, what if you read the directions carefully, what it says that you are supposed to do is every time before you use this case, you are supposed to test its waterproofness um, by submerging it in a bowl of water or a sink or something like that for 15 minutes and seeing whether any water gets in. When you do this, you're not supposed to use your actual phone. You're supposed to use the uh, dummy iPhone thing, which is in which ships with the case and which is what this stop label is um, emblazoned upon. So let's go and test the waterproofness first and see whether any water gets in. Okay, so I am all set here to do my waterproof test. So what they say you're supposed to do, again, my actual phone is not in here. This is the testing block but make sure that the case is put on correctly over the testing block and they just put it in water and then put something heavy on it to make sure that it stays submerged. So I'm going to use this water bottle here. All right, so 15 minutes have passed. The excitement is mounting. Let's see how this worked out. Okay, so in the instructions they point out that it's important to dry the outside of this before you open it up because obviously if you've got water on the outside you don't want it to get on the hopefully dry phone on the inside in the process of taking the outside off, the cover off. Okay, so let's get this off. We have a nice little spot here which is intended for the removal key to go into. This is this comes with a package. Um, the guy on Mobile Reviews A mentions that you can also probably use a coin, but um, I you know I kind of like the look of this little thing. So you just put it in the notch and then move it up here. And off it comes. Okay, so taking off the top here. It's important to read the directions and see what they consider to be normal. Um, they say in the directions that if you get a little bit of moisture in this outer section here, that this is perfectly okay, which is reassuring because there's definitely moisture here in this outer section. I guess the key thing is that it should not be inside the rubber boot. So let's see how that goes. Again, looking here, I can see that there is some water that has accumulated on the outside bit of the rubber boot. Um, this 
Again, according to the directions, is not a problem, but I'm going to draw it off so that it doesn't fall down inside and make it look like inside moisture when we take this off. And next, we will take it out of the bottom section. Looking here in the bottom, yes indeed we do see moisture, but again this is theoretically not a problem. Okay, so this is the exciting part. Let's see what happened here. Now looking at the back, again this was resting against the back plate which had water in it, so the fact that it has water on the outside I don't think is a concern. Let's dry this off. and opening it up you see a couple of drops here that were right around the edge I don't think that's an issue seems dry. Let's look on the inside. I do not see any evidence of water. So I would have to say that the initial test with the dummy worked just fine. I don't see a problem here. That's not water, that's something else. Some sort of... No, no water got inside the boot. Okay, so let's put this on my actual phone. I've just now installed the plastic screen protector that comes with the case. It's a pretty basic plastic screen protector. I don't think it has much in the way of scratch resistance or anything. Um, it does pretty much cover the entire screen here. And I, next I'm going to be putting on the special glass screen protector that they sell um, for an additional charge, which doesn't come included. But I thought it would be fair to uh, give the plastic screen protector also a chance. So, putting this on the phone, the directions are first that we put this flexible rubber boot on. First you put the bottom on to your phone. And then pull the top over on top. So this is what they call the wetsuit part, I guess. Next we have the back section. Um, as I put this on, I have to comment again how nicely made all of this stuff is. This seems like very heavy-duty plastic. Um, it has a very nice hand feel to it. You insert the rubber um, wetsuit part into the back section. Okay. want to make sure everything is positioned correctly here. And then the final part is you need to put the top on. So all you do is just align it together and then start snapping it down. And looks like all of the sections are nicely closed. Okay, looking at this case going around here, you notice at the bottom we've got a hinged protector here, which is giving us access to the speakers and to the lightning port. And then a separate one here, protecting the headphone jack. Things fairly deep inside. They do include an extender for the headphone jack in the packaging. 
So if you have something that is um, unlikely to fit into the headphone jack here, then you can use the extender. I am definitely able to get the Apple headphones to fit in here, which you can see that's fairly deep in. I don't think any unusual shapes are going to fit in here. But if you do have something that's a little bit more unusually shaped, you can use the extender here, which is really pretty cool. All right, so going around to the side here, we do have a spot if you want to attach this to a lanyard. That can be quite convenient for outdoor activities. Okay, volume up and down here are reasonably clicky. You have to press a little on the hard side, but it's not too hard. The uh, mute switch is covered and it's uh, accessible. You just um, operate it like the normal mute switch. Just reach in side to the covered section here and push it up and down. Going over to the top, it's quite unremarkable. Side here, we've got our power switch. Um, looking here, you can kind of see the home button situation. As I mentioned before, Touch ID does work, um, although it is a small spot. And then going up here, you can see we have a covered ear speaker and everything is really quite well protected. Um, I had read some concerns about audio quality with the iPhone 6 version of this case, so that's one of the things that I wanted to test on it. Since I've had this on my phone, well, I just put it on right now just for the video, but I have had it on before. Um, in having this case on my phone, I've used speakerphone um, and also just, you know, the regular ear speaker and everything works just fine. Um, it is perhaps not quite as good um, as a naked iPhone, but overall it's not anything that I would bother to complain about or that would keep me from using this case with pleasure. Um, I don't have any kind of issue with the audio quality. I really like the feel of the case. It's not nearly as big as you might expect. Um, it has a really heavy duty quality feel to it. I have not reviewed the LifeProof cases, but I've you know seen them in Best Buy and, and such, and I was always a little skeptical about the build quality of the LifeProof. Um, I guess, I don't know that I ever tried the free, but the new just seemed to me to be a little bit lightly made. Um, I would not say the same is true at all about the uh, Dog and Bone wetsuit. It seems to be quite heavily made. Um, although not particularly heavy, um, it just seems like a really, really nice quality case. And I like the fact that, I guess like the Nude, you can um, use the screen uh, without any kind of a screen protector on it. Um, as I said, I have their plastic screen protector in place right now, um, just to, you know, try it out. And it's perfectly acceptable as a plastic screen protector. Feels fine. Um, Long term, I doubt it will wear all that well because, well, it's a plastic screen protector and they do get scratched. However, I will be reviewing also the uh, glass bone guard tempered glass screen protector that is specifically designed to work with this case. So overall, very, very impressed with the dog and bone wetsuit. I think it's a great case. Um, the install is a little on the tricky side, but nothing uh, too particularly bad. I like the looks of it. Um, home button, well, yeah, it's a little constrained, but Touch ID still works fine. And I also look forward to trying out the tempered glass screen protector that goes with it, because I'm a big fan of the tempered glass screen protector genre. Um, I didn't have any issues with the camera. I tried the flash. Flash seems fine. Really, everything seems to work great. So, um, again, this is the Dog and Bone Wetsuit. Um, really nice quality case. Uh, you can get it from Dog and Bone uh, directly for, I think, about uh, $89. And um, thanks so much for watching my video. This is Kristen.